What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fist of Gulf Series. I want to take a look at Lou Salica's career for one moment. Very underrated, unappreciated, and not often talked about in boxing conversations. You see, he was born July 26, 1913 in Brooklyn, New York. He died January 30th, 2002 in Brooklyn, and he was 89 years of age at the time of his death. Stood five foot four inches, weighed 116 to 122 and a quarter pounds, and had a 66 inch reach as bantamweight. Now, as an amateur, he was a flyweight. Brought home all kinds of titles. Most people don't know about Lou Salica. He was managed by Jaime Kaplan and Willie Ketchman, but he was trained by Harry Wiley Sr. in preparation for the Olympic Games. And that's significant. Why? Because Harry Wiley Sr., under his tutelage, brought back five medals for the United States of America. Harry Wiley Sr. was a black trainer who would eventually train Sugar Ray Robinson, but also trained Canada Lee in spite of Valentine, Tommy Cox, and many, many others. He was in a ring with Doug Jones, preparation for Muhammad Ali. What was also interesting about Harry Wiley Sr. As I said, he brought home five medals, two gold, three bronze. And that has not been done until 30 years later, 1952. It would be Floyd Patterson who would bring home the gold medal in the middleweight division. Helsinki Games in Finland. So Harry Wiley Sr. deserves full credit for Lou Salica's career as an amateur in preparation for the Olympic Games. But the other trainer that Lou Salica would have would be Joe Stanley. And Lou Salica was one of 14 children. He had a sixth grade education. He would be the first to win the Golden Gloves champion that would win an Olympic bronze medal that would win a world champion as a professional. Quite an amazing story. He has victories over outstanding men, such as Pete Degrassi, Tony Dupree, Emilio Magana, Johnny Skippy Allen, Carlos Indian Quintana. Then he were champions, such as Richie Lamas. Now to give you a better perspective on the champions that he fought, let's look at Richie Lamas. He would defeat Cleo Shane and Bobby Poison Ivy, Petey Scalzo, Lou Feldman, and Bobby Poncho, Ray Lunny, Juan Zarita, Joey Archibald, and Chalky Wright. Just to give an example, he was also in there with Little Poncho. Now, Little Poncho had defeated fighters such as Benny Dawson, Little Dotto, Manuel Ortiz, Small Montana, and Henry Hook. Let's take a look at Henry Hook. He had 183 total bouts, 105 wins, 69 losses with 30 knockouts. But Henry Hook was in the ring with the who's who of boxing. Incredible fighter was Henry Hook because he fought them all. But Lou Salica was also in the ring with Cisco Escobar. Now all these men were champions. Escobar was in a ring with Harry Joffrey, Joey Archibald, Tony Marino, and Baby Casanova, Carlos Indian Quintana. Lou Salica was also in a ring with Midget Wargas. He fought fighters such as Black Bell, Speedy Dotto, and Archie Bell, and Lou Salica, and Small Montana, Juan Zarita. Amazing. Salica was also in a ring with him. Manuel Ortiz. He fought fighters such as Carlos Chavez and Lou Salica. Enrique Bolanos and Jackie Peterson. Howard Dad and Small Montana. Phil Terranova, Jackie Wilson. Joey Archibald. And Cisco Escobar. 
1931, Blue Salica would win the Metropolitan AAU Flyweight Championship. 1932, he really racked up a lot of trophies. He would win a New York City Golden Gloves as a flyweight champion. Inner City Golden Gloves and a flyweight champion. Italian American Flyweight Championship. National AAU Flyweight Championship. In the Olympic Games, the flyweight championship, he would bring home a bronze medal. He would have two fights in 1932 as a professional. Both in New York. Two round knockout. And a fifth round win. 13 fights in 1933. New York as well. 12 wins and one draw. December 27th, he would win in six rounds. Brooklyn, New York over Pete DeGrasse. Very impressive victory. He would have 10 fights in 1934. Eight wins, two losses. He would have two wins over Julian Katz. One loss and one draw over Midget Wargas. And one loss over Speedy Dotto. 1935, seven fights. One win, Midget Wargas. One win, 15 rounds. And one loss in 15 rounds. Francisco Escobar. For the NBA Bantamweight Championship belt, New York's Madison Square Garden. Would have 10 fights in 1936. Would win 10. Small Montana. And lose in 10. The Tony Marino. The Montana fight was in San Francisco, California. The Marino fight was in Los An- uh, I'm sorry, Las Vegas. Or Long Island City, I should say. Would have nine fights in 1937. Would lose 15. This Cisco Escobar, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Bantamweight Championship. I believe they have a stadium after Cisco Escobar during these days. Seven fights, 1938. All wins, three knockouts. Nine fights in 1939. Who'd have two draws, one loss. Little Dato, Oakland, California. He would lose in 10. And have two draws in 10 rounds. He would defeat Willie uh, Richie Lamone, 10 rounds. Hollywood, California. Manuel Ortiz in 10 rounds. Also in Hollywood, California. Five fights in 1940. 15 round draw over Georgie Pace. 15 round victory over Georgie Pace for the NBA Bantamweight Championship belt. Who have two title defenses in 1941. 1942, they were losing 12 to Manuel Ortiz. 1943, they would lose one to Manuel Ortiz. 1944, they would have a 10-round loss over Harry Joffrey, Baltimore, Maryland. Just to give you somewhat of a perspective on Lou Salica. He was a ball of dynamite. He punched very, very hard. But he was a better boxer than a puncher, if that makes any sense. He set his combinations up nicely. It was a clean jab, very good foot movement. And he was well schooled. Now, he had three golden gloves, and I believe it's listed as two. When you think about a very good fighter with skill and technique, think of Lou Salica. I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fistigov Series. All great fights and all great fighters will never be forgotten on my channel. I want to salute Lou Salica because I believe he was an outstanding fighter. Look for yourself. And you'll find that he was. Thanks for hanging in there with me.